My name is Michaela Dene. I am a senior here at Manhattan College. I am a communications major with a concentration in broadcasting. I have two minors, a minor in digital media and a minor in music. I decided to create this film because I felt like it was a topic that wasn't really talked about. Coming to a PWI or predominantly white institution, I felt that a lot of students of color had a lot of common experiences, but online or in film or on TV, there wasn't really a conversation about it or even something that told the story. <laughs> My name is Mahmoud Diop. I go to Manhattan College. I'm a senior majoring in International Relations and Labor Studies. My name is Vanessa Valencia. I'm a senior at Manhattan College. My name is Brianna Graves. I'm Praise. I go to Manhattan College. My name is Paris. I am International Studies and French double major with a minor in Arabic. I'm a sophomore and I go to Manhattan College. My name's Anthony Capote. I'm originally from Miami, Florida. I just graduated Manhattan College in December 2016 and now I'm a crime and politics reporter at the Riverdale Press. So the first three, four years of my life, I grew up in a little city in Nigeria. And then I moved to Brunei, which is a country in Southeast Asia. I'm originally from Mali in, uh, in West Africa. Uh, I came to the United States uh, when my father was named as, as a diplomat here. So I'm an international student from Nigeria, and Nigeria in um, River State, River State in Portacot. I came to Manhattan College because I'm from Maryland. So um, I wanted to go somewhere that was out of state and I wanted to start my business. I wanted to be an event planner. So I thought there was no better place than the city that never sleeps. So I wanted to go to New York. The, the main reason why I came here was the, the location of the school being in uh, New York City. And they help students within, in my field, particularly land internships at the UN and international organizations. So. I actually chose Manhattan because I knew that I wanted to move to the city. I knew that I wanted to be in New York. I had met some of the students and faculty here, and I really liked them, and I, I thought that this was the right choice for me. I assumed since it was close to the city, it was diverse, but it was a very, it's a very white campus. I don't really see as much diversity as they as they claim to be but I really loved the fact that it was so small and tight-knit. Actually my dad he kind of got me to look at it because he almost ended up going here. He was a Marine and so like he looked at this at this school after he got out of the Marine Corps and uh, but he was already married to my mom so she said no so <laughs> he just suggested it to me and it was cool because it was small and I liked it. <music> My first week was terrifying. Uh, when I moved in, I sort of stayed in my room until my roommate came because I knew her. I was sort of afraid to leave my room and mingle. My first week here wasn't that bad because being the fact that my brother goes here. It wasn't that bad. I didn't really know so many stuff. I didn't know people. I just like, it's kind of like coming into a new environment, like coming to a new world. Like you know nobody, you know nothing. I lived in a 10 man my freshman year. And it was definitely an interesting experience. My roommate was from East Islip. We had other roommates. One was from New Hampshire, one from Yonkers, another from Albany, and one more from Burma. Um, and that was really cool and interesting. I think it was basically learning how to live with people and how to interact with the different freshmen. So that was really conducive to my coming in as a freshman. <laughs> There's a few things that I think happen here at a predominantly white institution is that there's a separation between students of color and white students because students of color come from a different world and white students come from like a different world. Whether you want to say culture or something like that, it's a different world because black students have to deal with certain things that white students do not have to deal with and white students don't even know. They're not even really 
thinking about it because it doesn't affect them. And a lot of students of color get frustrated. They're like, why do they act like this? Why do they feel this way? They don't get it. But here's the thing. A lot of white people don't even know what it is. They've never experienced it. They don't know how to react. They, they can't even comprehend it. It's not even in their wildest like imagination. So when you say they don't get it, it's something that students of color really have to think about, that your friends or people that you're going, you're going to the same school, but you're experiencing two totally different experiences. I don't know that it's a conscious treating somebody differently, um, but I do think that there's a difference in how the sort of they subconsciously talk to people who are clearly not from the same backgrounds as them. I just feel some sort of energy that kind of pushes me away. I wouldn't say the school is very unified. I think there's certainly cliques in the school, and that's very obvious, uh, at least from my perspective. I think a lot of the commuters uh, hang out amongst themselves, and if you notice uh, closely, uh, most of them are, mi are the minorities here, whether it's African-American, Africans, Latinos, Arabs. Uh, most of the commuters are from the minority groups, and, and they tend to stay within uh, th that framework. Of course, like everyone's going to associate with people that look most like them. They tend to go to groups that they're familiar with. There is a community that I personally chose not to be a part of, but I do think that for my friends of color, in particular my black friends and my dark-skinned Hispanic friends, that that was a community that they never would have had a chance to be a part of. Um, Manhattan College has truly never been diverse enough for us to have huge cliques of students uh, who don't do any interacting with anybody else. Um, the big divide, I think, that exists on this campus is between commuter students and resident students. Um, most of our students of color have tended to be commuters over the years um, because you know, for economic reasons. You know, money is power, and when one group of people has a lot of it and another group of people has very little, they don't always deal with each other in a fair and equal way. When you come here, your skin color precedes you. People think certain things about you, so the way you react, the way you walk, the way you talk is always your, your color is always in the back of your mind. So if someone says something, you can't just react the way you want to react or you want to um, respond the way you want you to respond because in some ways you are representing not only you, but multiple other students of color. I do try to always be myself with everyone, but I'm definitely a different person with classmates than I am or even in Kelly Commons, talking to people that I pass here and there, I'm definitely different than when I'm in my apartment or with my friends. For the most part, I'm myself all the time, and whether if you know me, you know that, but uh, there's certain times where, you know, you gotta tone it down. You know, if, if I'm in the room with my roommates, you know, I'm a totally different person than I'm if I'm in the classroom. I feel that I completely have to wear a mask when I am in classes. I've been advised about um, per se, people of power, we'll, we'll just put it like that, people of power who may or may not favor African Americans. They don't necessarily understand uh, where you're coming from or why you're saying that. So I think in certain situations, you kind of have to hold back. <laughs> I certainly think that students of color can do as well in any white uh, college, assuming they had adequate preparation in high school. Now that's not always the case for our students of color, because we know that as much as Brown versus education was 1954, American education in general is still quite segregated. Um, most black kids go to schools with mostly other black kids, and that's true for Latino kids as well. Um, so we lack diversity in our early years, and uh, it becomes then a little more of a challenge, perhaps, for them to adjust socially 
to a predominantly white campus. I've noticed that the way that they talk is even different than the way the professors talk. And even though it's English, in some ways they're speaking a different language. The problem is that some of these students don't even know how to ask the questions to get the answer that will let them succeed in the class. The reason I went to a PWI is because, because I, that's, I don't know, to be completely honest with you, it's kind of where society led, led me. I wanted to know if I could stand next to someone who wasn't black. I wanted to come to a school that had predominantly white students. I wanted to compete and I wanted to do well because I had done that my entire life and I uh, wanted to do that in college to prove that to myself that I could do that. It's that internal sort of self-doubt of, you know, well, we all know about affirmative action, so maybe that's why I'm here, right? Maybe my ideas, I only think my ideas are good, but really, I'm a token hire, or I'm a token student, or I'm doing something for their numbers, and that's why they're doing me the favor of letting me be in school. A big reason why I didn't choose to go to a historically black college was because I didn't feel that it was going to that it was going to work for me. I didn't want to go to HBCU. I, I concretely decided that is not what I wanted to do. I always uh, have thought that. Uh, while sometimes you need some reinforcement from people who look like you, uh, it's also very important for students of color to be interacting with the entire campus community. Because in the real world, you have to work with a diversity of people. I believe acting white for some people is a sense of survival, and I don't think it's selling out. I think that it's them trying to compete in this white world. I know that I can be treated better if I just let people think that I'm white in New York, and yet at the same time, it's like, but that's not who I am. You walk into the cafeteria, you see all the black kids are sitting together, you see all the white kids are sitting together. If you're, if you're African American or you're black and you're competing, I, I wouldn't say that you necessarily feel like you have a community here that you can, uh, adhere, that, that looks like you, that thinks like you, that understands um, most of your struggles. There's sort of like the outsiders that just stick with their friend group, go to class, you know, and just sort of like a do you kind of thing and that's what I consider me and my friends to be. Maybe people hang around with people they more, feel more comfortable around or you just connect with people. Here in America, I feel like racism is so ingrained in us. Yes, the college does have a little bit of a racial problem that, that is underground. But everywhere has that. Your job will have that, your neighborhood will have that, and it's just because I've, not everyone grows up the same way. Whether we're on the same grade level or the same, um, have the same GPA or something, I still feel like they'll, they will always have a upper hand. They tell you, you can be whatever you want to be, or if you put your mind to it, you can do it, but the reality is that there are some institutional systems that stop you from accomplishing things that you want to accomplish. No matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to get to that point. I come from an upbringing that you know, told me to be proud of my culture and where I've come from. And I know my history, I know what, what, what my people have done, I know what we're capable of. So for me personally, I've, I've never felt uh, inferior to, to anybody. I've always had the mentality that racism was gone and stuff like that, but after living in New York City for like four years now, I kind of like, I've kind of like come to realize that racism is still there though. One of my classmates who I'm pretty close with, um, she sent me a Snapchat um, basically of her and her friend, but they were using that word repeatedly. People always expect me to be late because you're black. People expect me not to get good grades because you're black. And there was a student uh, trying to say that you know all Muslims or or that Islam is the course of is an issue of terrorism. I heard that somebody had a paddle that had the N word on it, or it had something horrible like that. Either way, it was a paddle, and some kids saw swastikas in a bathroom, 
That's terrifying. He said, um, well, I'd rather be uneducated than a liberal spick anyway. Um, and that was kind of a weird moment for me that I, I had never really experienced and I didn't understand what that felt like. I was in the lounge and the guy who lived next door to me, it's co-ed dorm, so like, not my dorm, but the door next. Uh, he was in the lounge too with his roommate and I'm studying, watching TV. I knew them. They were considered acquaintances, close, closer to a friend than an acquaintance actually. And one of the young men were sagging their pants. I don't really, I don't, I, I like, people do that back home, my friends do that. I tell them, pull their pants up, that's how I was raised. My mom's old school and you know, I got a dad from the South, so <laughs> you pull your pants up. <laughs> And I told him, you know, you should pull your pants up when you're in public, especially when you're in front of women. And he said, I know this nigger did not just tell me to pull my pants up. <laughs> like, because not even the fact that he called me that, it was like, because I was black, I had no reason to say that. I had no reason to correct his, his mannerisms. Like, I, I was just not on the same level. And I had to repeat himself. And him and his friend, they laughed. And they walked away and I was so enraged. White people here are so afraid of you thinking that they're racist. Like it's like it's like an actual fear there. I feel like a lot of white people here, they want to be so open. And usually the people that are so open are the ones that have the biggest prejudices. With everything that's going on with the Black Lives Matter movement and President Trump and I don't think they necessarily want to want to be associated with uh, that group of America. So I think with them, they don't necessarily want to offend you if you're black, they don't want to offend you if you're Muslim. I think that there's a lot of racism still in the classroom. I think many kids are raised in very racist families, or at least in families that don't like to be called racist, but reinscribe very racist notions. A lot of my classes sometimes make me feel like a subject instead of a student. A lot of times you'll find that um, people study black people. They study African Americans. They study minorities. Um, how often do people really study white people? In my psychology class there was just two black people, myself and this other girl. And uh, our names are completely different and my psychology teacher would mix up the both of us. In most of my classes, I'm the only African-American student. Nine times out of ten, I'm the only black girl in the class. The majority of the classes that I've been in since college, I've been like the only black person. When you're in those classes, you are most of the time the only person of color. And you kind of have those like realizations where you look left and you look right and you're like, wow, there's no one here like me. And for some people, like for me, it's like, ah, I mean, I've always been the minority at school. So it wasn't such a huge shock until like I got here and it was like, whoa, like, you know, I'm at a, a college and there's nobody really that looks like me or that can really relate to me. Let's say that there is a topic about slavery and multiple students will look at you to see if you have a reaction. When I first, when I first realized it, it wasn't like a aha moment, but it was more like, wow, like, I mean, this is, I should get used to this, you know? But at the same time, it was just like, let's not hope, you know, any subject comes up where they all look at me. Uh, I think we all relate to this when you're talking about the, you know, when it's the civil rights movement and everybody kind of looks at you at the as the spokesperson uh, for the whole black community. Being a person of color and dating at Manhattan College I think is a little bit more complex. I haven't met anybody in Manhattan College. Dating on this campus is very different because I don't feel like a lot of people in our generation date anymore. Girl if you wanted a boyfriend now you could find a boyfriend now. I feel like it's harder like trying to connect with a Manhattan College guy on campus. There's so few of us, so I mean, in some ways you are kind of forced to date outside of your race. I don't think it's about race that much. So I've thought about it, yeah. 
I, I don't have a problem with dating anybody outside of my, my, my culture, my race. It would just be interesting to know how they felt when I took them home. I personally have dated two people here. They've both been white. One day he comes to me and he's like very stressed out. And you, you could tell that this was a, a topic that he had been talking about in his mind for a long time. He said, Michaela, um, this is an issue that I've been thinking about. If we get married and we have kids, you and my kids can say the N-word and I can't. That was a that was a thing that two white people or two black people wouldn't have to talk about. I, I got into a long-term relationship uh, with a girl from Western Massachusetts and it wasn't necessarily a problem for us. I, I never got once the sense that she was racist. Um, and then one day I met her brother and her brother asked me uh, what it's like being a mulatto baby. I have nothing against, you know, white women or Latino women, but I think I do have a preference for uh, black women and there's not there's not many black women here on campus. The issue with being a, a, a woman of color here is that more black men date white women than, than black women date white men. If a black girl looks at a, a black guy and they're like, oh, I think he's attractive, in her mind, she has to think, okay, but does he like black girls? So sad as you have to question that, like, mm, he's black, but does he like black people? It kind of bugs me, because I don't, I don't really get where it comes from. It does bother me a little bit, because like, I shouldn't even have to ask that question, because there's so many different people in the world. So I, don't, I never really get when people say, oh, I don't date black girls, or I don't date white people. You haven't met all the white people in the world, you haven't met all the black people in the world, so how can you say that? You see like, like you see like a black guy talking to a white girl or whatever, and you're like, why is he doing that? <laughs> or it's not like, why is he doing that? But like, she's like, she's so, she's so plain. She's not, <laughs> you know, she's not black goddess or whatever. I feel like they do take into consideration that maybe they can get away with more. Maybe like, we, maybe, oh, where you will yell at them. Maybe they'll just be like, oh, don't do it again. You know, so, you know, I feel like they do take into consideration that we won't take a lot of stuff, they will. The guys that are going after those girls are not even close to my type. It's, it's really up to you. If you're, if you're not into interracial dating, then you might have to stay single. I think coming to this school has changed the way I see the world. Because I'm from Virginia, like my family's from Southern Virginia, um, so I know what racism is. I don't think I've ever experienced this type of racism until I came to this school. I think that it's changed the way I view people and how I relate to people and the type of people that I surround myself with. Even though I go to a predominantly white school, I feel like it's made me more black in more ways than one because I have no other option but to be but to fall back into more my authentic self. It's made me realize what I don't want to be. Black uh, for me means that you come from uh, a culture and uh, upbringing that's very proud of their, of their tradition. It means coming from uh, most people who have, a, who have rhythm, who have a sense of good food, who like to have fun. And I think being black for me is just being bold and beautiful. Coming from a Spanish-speaking country, with family members who are immigrants and, you know, being part of that culture, uh, for me personally, it means that my roots are not in this country. You know, when I went to Cuba for the first time, it was like I had spent 19 years living and then for the first time in my whole life I walked into my own house. Being Nigerian to me means sense of community. It means loving the person who is also Nigerian as much as you would love your family. There's this uh, quote that I hear all the time that Americans live to work while the Spanish work to live. And I think that sums up what being Spanish is perfectly. It's about the journey. Being Nigerian, I speak English, I speak Africana, and I speak something else. She's gonna look like awesome. Being a black woman means that I'm strong, I'm opinionated, unapologetically so. Um, it means that I walk through the world with a certain lens that others didn't have to. Being a black American 
um, I feel unappreciated. You know, I feel like I made strides to accept your culture. I've made strides to, to be more than me. And I still am not accepted. I will still be looked at as that black girl. I will still be looked over my shoulder. My job will still look at me when something gets stolen. My, like, there is no peace of mind being African-American. I come from, you know, the first people that are, that have been on this earth. And that is, you know, kind of humbling and it makes you, a lot of people like to say, say being black is like a negative aspect or they kind of like want to put it down. But for me, being black is like the most positive thing about me. I mean, it's something, I come from like great people and I come from people that have, no matter what, have always, per have always persevered and have always come out on top. And um, that is very humbling. Nobody knows the best way to go. There are splits in the road as I look for.